good afternoon Bridget okay well uh, just pray <laughs> just pray it's always a blessing to be here and it's always a challenge because the challenge is time yes time but let us pray All right, let us pray. Our Father, we ask for your presence through your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. So our topic is transformation, not modification. Hmm. Ah. Uh, the third angel's message is to lighten the earth with its glory, but only, only those who have withstood temptation in the strength of the mighty one will be permitted to act a part in proclaiming it when it shall have swelled into the loud cry. And I want to say welcome, uh, welcome to our brethren on live stream and uh, Zoom room and those who are using their phone. And welcome to all of us here. Now, we are challenged that only those, only, and the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. The dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wandered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with the beast? Our first slide says, only those who have withstood temptation against the mighty one. Who is able to make war with the beast? So we see the beast there in um, Revelation 13 and verse 1. And this beast is known as what? The nondescript beast, Revelation, that's Daniel 7, verse 8, this beast, this nondescript beast, verse 7, Daniel 7, verse 7, that is this beast, and verse 8, this is. So these two beasts are, no, are known as the nondescript. So what about this beast now, Revelation? The leopard-like beast, or another name is known as what? Let me go back. This leopard-like beast has a mouth of a what? Lion, feet of a body of the leopard, seven heads and ten horns. All of those beasts that was before, parts of those beasts make up this beast. 
So this is the leopard like beast and, and another name for that beast is what? Composite beast. Now, and there was war in heaven. Remember that dragon, uh, the dragon gave power and great authority. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. Now we want to see what kind of power this dragon has. Because this dragon gave power and great authority to the beast. Now this dragon, we are told, fought against Michael. He fought against Michael in heaven. The name Michael means who is like God. Hence, it is one of the many titles of Christ. And that is in 2SR. Daniel calls him Michael, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. So that is who is like God? Jesus Christ. He is uh, the one that this, uh, this name fit. The dragon war against Jesus. Michael means who is like God. So the dragon warring against Jesus is actually warring against God. The most I he is warring against the most high. This is dragon, you know. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil. So the dragon is the devil. And this devil and Satan which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the herd, and his angels was cast out with him. He deceived the whole world. The whole world. Now, when we say the whole world, are we talking about outside of the church? We will see. So, in um, one of the main evidence... Or the sign that we are in the end time is deception. Remember in Matthew chapter 24, verse 3 and verse 4, the disciples asked Christ, what will be the sign of your coming and the end? In verse 4, Jesus told them, see that no man deceive you. So deception will be fully active and I mean, very, very intense deception. Now, Jesus was speaking to the disciples, and they represent the church, present to believers. Paul make mention of that same in Second Thessalonians chapter two and verse three. Speaking of the man of sin, the last days, see that no man deceive you. So now we need to examine ourselves, you know, because we are not a part of the world. But we too can be in deception. So we're going to do that. In Second uh, Corinthians 13 verse 5, examine ourselves. This we're gonna see this this deception. This and there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, and we know that dragon is the devil already. We know that. Having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. Now we already know that seven means complete. And 10 means universal. Thank you very much. Need the help. And they need the prayers too. Because we know, know, right. So anyway. So the heads, now what does the heads represent? We know. 
the church all over the rod, volume, uh, uh, volume two of the shepherd rod, the TGs, two TGs, 16, say all over, and the scriptures too, right? I mean, yes, these are, and the horns represents the civil powers, outside um, politician and those people. So this devil has seven heads and ten horns. He controls the church and state. This is during the time of when Christ is supposed to be born. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. How did he do that? How did he draw them? Deception. Deception. The devil had great authority in heaven. We know that. We read Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah 14. So he already has great authority in heaven. Now, what did he develop? Pride. Deception. Yes. So he brought that deception on earth. And it says, and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born, quickly. So this is Revelation 12, but this great uh, red dragon, seven heads and ten horns, right there, stood before the woman. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. When Herod the king heard these things, now who would Herod represent, the head or the horn? When Herod the king heard these things, now Herod was the king. So who would he represent? The horn. The horn. And when the king heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. Who do Jerusalem represent? What they represent? The church, the head. So here, the church and the world, the government at that time, were troubled. They were troubled. Why? Because they heard news. And we know that news is called the good news, the gospel. Yes. This is the power of the gospel because we know the Bible tells us in uh, Romans 5 verse 20, we are sin about grace does much more. So the devil, he has authority and power. So there must be a counter. There must be a counter. Anyway, because of time. And so when he had heard, he had gathered, this is, Herod, all the chief priests and scribes, that is the leaders and elders of the church, of the people together, he demand of them where Christ should be born. So this is the world, the politician, gathering the churchmen. At the time of Christ's first advent, so we're, this is reflecting Christ. At the time of Christ's first advent, Advent, darkness had covered and the earth, the earth, not Jerusalem, the earth and gross darkness, the people. Truth looked down from heaven and now, nowhere, 
no wear could discern the reflection of her image. No light, it's pure darkness. And the church and in the world, spiritual darkness had settled down over the religious world, present to believers that time. And this darkness was almost universal and complete. Almost. Almost. There was a few here and a few there. And we saw in Matthew chapter 2 where these wise men, so they represent some of the few were scattered here and there who were looking for this promise that was promised for thousands of years, far back. So we continue. All encouraging that all these things happen unto them, so our forefathers, Israel, for examples, and they are written for our admonition. We're going to take heed and learn upon whom the ends, plural, of the world are come. That which happened to Jacob is sure to happen to us. And all comforting to know all this ahead of time. Now, if never before we should see that where there is a type, there is also an antitype. And that where there is no type, there is no truth. So there will be all those events that took pass going to happen again and more intense because we are in the last days. Quickly. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together at Sokor, which belonged to Judea and pitched between Sokor and Ezekiah and Esdamin. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and set the battle array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side. And there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubic and a span. So what we are seeing, two armies is in confrontation to battle. One army is the army of Israel, and the other army is the army of the Philistines. Now, which one of these armies is God's army? Israel. So now, if God's army is going into battle, God's army, we would expect that the whole universe will be looking because it's God's army. All right. Now, if God's Israel represents God's army, then the Philippines would represent the enemy of God's army. And so we would expect the whole host of darkness also will be looking, all right? So this would be, the universe will be intense in that battle, at least looking. Like, and he stood and cried, this is Goliath, the giant, he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, why are you come out to set your battle in a way? I am not high a Philistine and these servants to Saul. Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. And if he be able to fight with me and kill me, then will we be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall he be, then shall he be our servants and serve us 
And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. I defy. This is presumptuousness to the highest level. I mean, presumptuousness. Give me a man. Why all the, the, these people did not respect the God of Israel, the, the army? That is that I defy. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul, now who was Saul? The king and all Israel heard those words of the Philistine. They were dismayed, distressed. But as she stress, pain, and greatly afraid. This is the army, you know. They were the protector of Israel, the, 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 what we call the civilian. Now, if the army is in distress and pain and sorrow, Sister Maureen, and greatly afraid, what about the civilian? No, quickly, quickly. Again, Jesse made, uh, um, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen these. And David was the youngest, and the three eldest followed Saul. So how many sons did Jesse had? He had eight sons. How many brothers David had? Seven brothers. And he was... The last one, the num number eight. Now, so three went with Saul. They went to the battle. And five left behind. Okay. And the Philistine drew morning and evening for, and presented himself for 40 days. So 40 days, the army of Israel, God's army is in distress. And greatly afraid for 40 days, night and day. So they would pray that it would be night. And when night comes, they pray that it would be day. Stress. God's army. God's army. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of God, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words. And David heard them, and all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him, and were sore afraid. Now, the Bible is using adjectives. So they were not afraid. They were greatly afraid. They were solely afraid. I mean, they were this, I mean, they may be this, is the first in history for some of these men. Warrior. King Saul had so much pain and stress and sorrow. Knee knocking hard. I mean, just distress. But God provided a man. I mean, and David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a liar and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him. David went out after him. I mean, because at the time, I, I David went out, you know. We're talking about a lion and a bear. So he didn't, he didn't go the, the opposite direction. He, I mean, he go after this uh, beast and smote him. So he went after him and he smote him and, del not, and delivered it out of his mouth and that is the lamb we're talking about some serious victory here you know and i just pray that god will just hold back the time let her get in get this point out this is serious victory 
Anyway, and when he arose, when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. So here is this bearer, this lion going away with the prey. And David went after him. And the lion saw what was happening. And then it says, when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he had defied the armies of the living God. Probation closed for him. David is saying that, you know, this is David uttering a prophecy. Say, he defied the armies of the living God for 40 days, 40 nights. There you, you, you die now. Probation closed for you. David said, Moreover, the Lord hath delivered me out of the, the paw of the lion. David give, <laughs> he give God the glory. He says, He was delivered out of the paw of the lion and the bear, and out of the paw of the bear. So it's a fight. David says he came out without a scratch. The paw, you know, you know that big, the tall nails that are sharp. And David says, I was delivered not only from his mouth, but from the paw. No scratch. Nothing. Now, these are the first time uh, inspiration has this written. Because we don't know if David had repeated those stories before. Who will he tell? Who will believe him? This is a little boy, you know, a little lad. Oh, so man, you're talking story, man. You're talking story. So who would he? So here now, David is making a testimony. He will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. No, because of time. But we know that these men, they were very weary to allow David to go. They were very weary. But David didn't persuade them. They see the sense of determination. And the Lord allow, uh, allow them not to restrict David. Because they could have easily restricted him. He's a little boy. No experience with war, nothing. And he's telling us that he fought beer. And, but who's there to say, yes, I saw. I mean, I was there. I was, and I saw. No one. So they didn't have to believe. So here, David is brought before Saul. Because of time, let me go. David is brought before Saul and tells him that Israel need not fear. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Saul objects, but because of his youth, David refers to the perils. He was, he escaped to the perils he had experience in the wilderness. He saved the sheep under his care. He humble, humbly this ascribed his deliverance to God. The Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the liar and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. So David because he have been victorious, David has been victorious over his personal battle. He was confident. The, his personal battle, he has been victorious. And so he was confident that God was with him. Now, if we are not victorious over our personal battle, you know. 
we need to be examine ourselves, born again. Why is it that these army, Israel, God's army, these men of experience were wasting time and delaying for 40 days, they trembling, worrying, fretting, stressing, headache, all kind of ache. Sin was in them life. They were not victorious over the personal sin. Time. David's testimony. He had a testimony. Here David publicly testify of his personal victories. So we have to have that victory. Victory over the lion. Victory over the bear. David knew that he was powerless. He knew that these were beasts of prey. When we say beasts of prey, do we understand? Yes. A vicious beast, carnivorous, looking for food. He knew that a hungry lion is a hungry lion. And he went after that lion. I know time, so let me just move on. To have a fully rounded, now we're going to move to another level. Please bear with me and let it go now because we're going to another level. To have a fully rounded, integrated personality and character, a child must properly develop the physical and the mental as well as the spiritual faculties. To this end, his training should begin very early, just as soon as he is able to walk and speak. Because if he is left to squander his time until grown, older, he will acquire a zebra a zebra like nature. One impossible this is inspiration speaking you know, impossible to change from doing nothing to doing something. No, I don't know if any one of us who are born in this what we call it now um, century especially have a full, rounded, developed integrity, uh, integrated personality, character, and physical, mental, and spiritual faculties develop roundedly, evenly. All of us have been abused well, some of us might be still being abused. We have mental abuse, physical abuse, verbal abuse, all kind of the abuse. Long list, wouldn't finish. All kind of abuse. But now, inspiration says it for us to change. It's impossible. It's impossible. Time. Now, David, right? This was the characteristic, or this is the characteristics of David. And we are called Davidian. We need to have this. Even though we are and was, or maybe still is, abused and exposed to abuse on various levels and in diverse manner. But there's hope. Contribute something worthwhile to the world. Let me go quickly. As a vision and a aim, considerate of others, unselfish, courageous, and fearless, uh, charitable. We're talking about the characteristic of David, right? Master of circumstances, never sensitive. 
seeks not praise or pity. Open-minded, logical and sound reasoners, careful of what he does and how he does it. Did it stop there? Let me see if it stopped there. Let me check. No, there's more. We have a lot of battle to fight in our life and we don't have much time. Accept correction and unshakable courage. Watching God's providence, perfect peace of mind, in great demand, very discriminating, modest, obedient to the laws of God. Wow, so much. Constant. And that is from the cookbook. Let me rush on now. How is it that we're going to achieve this kind of character? Being subject to abuse, maybe from a childhood, right up. By nature, the art is evil. And who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. No human invention find a remedy. Can find a remedy for the sinning soul. The fountain of the heart must be purified before the streams can become pure. He who is trying to reach heaven by his own works in keeping the law is attempting an impossibility. There is no safety for one who has merely a legal religion, a form of godliness. The Christian life is not a modification or improvement of the old, but a transformation of nature. There is a death to self and sin and a new life altogether. This change can be brought about only by the effectual working of the Holy Spirit. So is the Holy Spirit going to work in us? We who have been abused to have the characteristic of David. Now let me move on because I have four slides and 2.5 four, I mean, It is the Spirit that makes effectually what has been wrought out by the world's Redeemer. It is by the spirit that is the heart is made pure. Through the spirit, the believers become a partaker of divine nature. Christ has given his spirit as a divine power to overcome all in hereditary, uh, her hereditary and cultivated tendencies to evil. The spirit is there. Use him. And let go of ourself. No victory there. Let me move on quickly because of time. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do it so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. From Hebrews 12. Now let me go to the last verse. Verse 4. He have not yet resisted unto blood striving against sin. Ye, you, and I, and those who are on live stream, and those in the Zoom, and those who are using the phone, have not yet resisted unto blood. But inspiration says, so I'll quickly move on. Like the wind which is invisible, Yet the effects of which are plainly seen and felt is the spirit of God in its work upon the heart, upon the human heart. That regenerating power which no human eye can see. Give it to one more minute, please, Mr. IT. The thoughtless and wayward become serious. The hardened repent of their sins. And the faithless believer, the gambler, the junkard, the licentious becomes steady, sober, and pure. The rebellious and obstinate become meek and Christ-like. When we see these changes in the character, we may be assured. Let me run because I have one more slide. I'm begging some time. David's victory over the giant 
against whom no one was able to make war typifies the victory of the church, the house of David, in the time of trouble such as never was over the beast and his image. Concerning whose formidableness, the revelator asks, who is like unto the beast and who is able to make war with him? The giant, now this, uh, this, look at this point. If we don't get anything else, let we get this. The giant Goliath accordingly represent, represents those who know, know presently defy the servants of God. And we are talking about the Holy Spirit, the transforming work. We, 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 we are we are not allowing ourselves to be transformed rebellious, stiff, naked all kind of so we move on to the last slide if thou hast run with the footmen and they have wearied thee then how canst thou contend with horses and if in the land of peace wherein thou trustest they wearied thee then how wilt thou do in the swelling of Jordan. God bless us.